Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Lamber Lair, the live edition, broadcasting live from South Florida here on this beautiful Sunday. It's like 90 degrees outside. Spring is here. If, if you're a Floridian, it's, it's summer usually. But anyway, um, this week I wanted to do sort of something really quick. Um, last week I shared with you guys a new project uh, that we started working on. It is a physical like button. This was one of Tony's ideas. And, ooh, matrix mode here. So I just wrapped up the guide for this week. Uh, this is what it looks like, finalized. And I just want to step with you guys, uh, step through some of the things I did on the enclosure and the project um, so you guys can check that out. Um, yeah, so this was Tony's idea since uh, Facebook had an update to their like button. They added reactions. And then not too long ago, um, I think earlier this week, uh, GitHub added reaction button. So I don't know, it was a pretty cool thing. So Tony thought, you know, it'd be cool to make this physical like button thing. Um, and the cool part about it is it just uses a couple of components, uh, a seven segment LED display, a uh, trinket microcontroller, and a, an arcade button. And I figured I'd add an LED to the arcade button just to sort of spice it up so you can see here in the photo. Um, it looks nice and bright. So let's take a look at my Workbench, let's do the workbench real quick. We'll, we'll step back to the CAD in a minute here, but I just wanted to show you guys, I still have the little breadboard here that I shared with you last week. And this is it all wired up. So when we click the button and like that, we increment the little number on the display here. And yeah, that's, that's pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, I know it's kind of like a novelty thing, but pretty cool project because you can use it for all sorts of stuff. Anything usually uh, that kind of needs a, a digital tally counter, you could use that to keep track of like attendees or like tr track of a score or something like that. So that's kind of cool. Um, let's step through the CAD real quick just to show you uh, what the what the project looks like. So again, last week uh, I showed I showed you guys how I put together the seven segment backpack. Um, I use Eagle CAD to sort of get dimensions out of it, and then I use those dimensions to draw this up in Fusion. So if you haven't seen that tutorial yet, be sure to check that one out after this one, of course. And then what I did with the trinket is uh, instead of redrawing it because it's got like these really nice detailed edges, I just went ahead and exported a DXF out of uh, Eagle CAD and just imported it in to, to uh, Fusion 360. You do have to be a little bit cautious about your scaling factor. So you have to make sure your scaling is all good and you have to double check your measurements. But other than that, it was pretty straightforward to do. Brought everything in here and made this little two piece enclosure. So it's just a top and a, and a bottom. And I made a little section, cross section, so you can see all the components, how they kind of fit in there. Um, standard stuff like um, some standoffs to keep the trinket in place. And I made these, let me turn this off for a second. I made these giant like standoffs for holding up the um, the backpack PCB for the seven segment display. And then the display itself has uh, a little holder area for the top cover. Oh, just hit it. And hide the bottom. You can see here, there's like this little lip here. And then, you know, we can do turn the section analysis on so we can see it. So you can see a little a little ledge holder thing that keeps the display in place. And there's a little bit of a gap here, 0.2 millimeter gap just for tolerances and stuff. And that's pretty much how that's being held in place. The button just has a hole and the button has um, these little clips on the edges that keeps it in place. And that's so you can panel mount it to, to your surface. Um, so that's pretty much it there. Let's put the back the button back. Um, let's see. There's like, so one thing that was kind of interesting is um, I have these like corner standoffs and I added, you know, little screw areas for number 440 screws, but I actually didn't end up needing them. I actually didn't put screws in the corners because the tolerances fit pretty well. So if you look at the cross section again, you can see I have this lip here that goes across um, the top part of the enclosure and there's like a teeny little gap here and that just makes it so there's enough uh, clearance for it to actually snap in because if, if you don't add that it'll it'll not close 
So just a couple iterations I had to find out, but um, overall it came out pretty good. Um, so I think that's about it for the CAD. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments and I'll gather them up after, uh, after I do my little spiel here. But that's pretty much for the enclosure. Um, yeah, I'll of course give this, uh, give you guys a link for this so you can modify the design if you want to make it your own, put different components or something in it. There's plenty of room for a battery. Made sure there's plenty of room for a battery. And um, for this particular pocket, we, we made it pretty simple so you don't need a battery uh, inside. You could just power it through USB here. So that's why we have a little cutout for it. But that's pretty much it. Really simple project. Um, yeah, shout out to Tony for coming up with this one. Really simple and timely, I would say. Again, the guide is pretty much wrapped up. Um, it's actually live if you want to check it out. Um, yep, so what I'll do now is just show you guys the actual hardware stuff. So here's the 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 button, right? Oh, let me show you this one. So this is the arcade button. And the cool thing about this is that not only is it like low profile, but it's um, it's it's really easy to replace this with a 3D printed anything. So you could put like an icon. In this case, we made a little thumbs up version. And it's not actually a two piece. It's a two piece design. It's not like a dual extruded thing. Um, so it's just like this little cap that's printed in white PLA. And then this is just a cutout. It can be whatever emoji. Come on, focus. It probably won't focus. <laughs> Trust me, it's a thumbs up. Um, so yeah, you print that out and you pretty much replace this here. So I'll take this apart real quick. There's these little clips right here on the side of these, on the, on the side of the arcade button. And if you press them in with a screwdriver, it's really easy to push it upwards and then take out this whole little piece. See, the piece here has, it, this is a two piece thing, so this comes out easily. It's not glued or anything, which is nice. And this little stem here is what actually actuates the, the micro switch here, or the, the switch. So that's how that works. And all the spring stuff is inside the little black box thing. So that's how that's working. So you can, you know, easily replace this out. So instead of making an exact copy like the stem, I had to think about how to uh, make it so I can actuate that and still have uh, this piece here, the little cover piece. So what we came up with is uh, something I already actually did. Um, in a previous project I made, uh, an, I mounted a, a, a single NeoPixel inside of this button and I pretty much just used that same design but instead of mounting the NeoPixel, I put a, a LED sequin, which is um, just a little surface mount LED with a resistor on it and the PCB, I just glued it into this little thing here. So this is the actual piece that gets pressed and actuates it. And the way it's um, put together is you just sort of snap this into the bottom here like so and there's plenty of room for the wires and things I hope this is coming out okay on the camera and then when you put it back inside you do have to thread the wire through the, the or at least the positive and negative wires through the little side here um, and that's pretty straightforward but you do have to kind of be cautious of how you mount this into place like that okay Yay, it worked. So, you know, it diffuses the nice, uh, it diffuses very nicely inside there. And uh, the wires are, are free to, uh, to, to sort of roam around in there so you can press it. So, you press it and the, the counter goes up. Uh, Tony just added a feature where if you hold it down for 10 seconds, it'll actually uh, clear It'll reset the numbers, so there you go, it's resetting it. So that's cool. And again, everything's just powered through the trinket, and I have this USB cable plugged into the computer. Um, so yeah, so here's the two enclosure pieces, and I already, already installed the screws here. These are number 256 screws, and they're 3 eighths of an inch long. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll disconnect this and I'll show you guys how you have to install it. So this is kind of an interesting way because usually you just you mount things in, but um, 
because I have this whole this whole circuit already wired up, you have to kind of thread some things. So what you get to do first is insert the LED segment through this hole here, then the trinket, and then make sure you don't kink any wires, and then pretty much this goes up. And make sure you orient your icon how you want before you clip it in there. Make sure my wires aren't are nice, not being kinked. Okay. And you pretty much just press this in like that. So that's how it's mounted there. So now you're free to orient this correctly and put it through the little thing here. So you can see how the friction keeps that in place. And then the posts on this guy here on the bottom case will um, will go inside the little mounting holes. And then the trinket, um, since I already have the screws in there, the cool thing is about the trinket is um, you know the holes are a little loose, so there's enough there's enough play here to just seat it into the screws there. So you can see it's lined up nicely here. And then all you gotta do is just kind of make sure your wires are out of the way not being clipped and that's it pretty simple and straightforward plug it in hopefully everything works LED will turn on instantly because it's getting power and um, the bootloader is like a couple seconds but there you go um, that's pretty much pretty much it um, I made two versions this is just regular PLA like gray PLA and then this is actually um, cork fill. So it's, it's cork wood uh, composite material, PLA, with PLA, PHA. It's from uh, Color Fab. Fine folks at Color Fab. And instead of using the blue, I use a little rose, uh, a rose colored LED sequin and the red uh, display. This is actually a 14 segment display. Don't recommend using a 14 segment display because the seven, it's kind of overkill, right? This can do alpha characters, but we don't need those alpha characters. So this is all I had uh, when I first made it. So that's why, and they're a little bit different. So um, in terms of like the, the mounting holes and the PCB, it's just a little bit bigger, but there you go. Pretty much the same thing. So the design files, of course, are gonna be available to download. Uh, Tony will make his GitHub repo available if it isn't already. So I'll have that stuff linked. Um, well, you, you'll catch it on Thursday, but I think that's about all I wanted to share with you guys. Um, some other stuff. Uh, I'm printing uh, some drony trophy parts in the background there on my printer bot play. So I'm just printing that stuff out. I've been, um, you know, updating the design because um, it's 2016 and uh, the old trophy had 2015 on it. And um, we need to make three of them. So. It's all it, it's all diced up into pieces because we need to polish them using a, a rotary tumbler, using uh, brass pointy screws as the medium, and it comes out really nice. I wish I had a part, but they're actually downstairs in the garage. They look really really excellent. Um, using new screws really makes it awesome. Um, so I think that's about all I have for you guys. I just wanted to do a quick stream. It is Sunday, uh, so I don't want to keep you guys. Um, too, for too long so uh, let's see if you guys have any questions uh, there we go first question da, 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 da. yeah um, so I see a question here from uh, Morel um, he's thinking about testing out Fusion 360 for his Shapeway shop any advice before buying in um, you in terms of like buying the software, I, I like the fact that Fusion 360 is free uh, for makers, education, and if you're using it for commercial purposes, it's actually free for anyone who's making under $100,000. So I think it's only for people that are using it for you know big amounts of work. If you're doing like an independent Shapeway shop, I think you're in the clear. Um, in most of my tutorial videos, I have like a, a download link for Fusion 360, so make sure to use that link. Uh, I'll try to add it in this description after this stream. Oh yeah, and David Watts, 
uh, already answered. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you can you can totally play around with it. Um, cool. He sunk about twelve hours, and yeah, I I I have I don't know all of the the stuff, all of the tools inside of Fusion. There are just immense amounts of tools in Fusion three hundred and sixty. I'm only using like ten percent of it, but it is great uh, for all sorts of projects. Um, I started off with Tinkercad. And then I graduated from Tinkercad to uh, 123D Design, which is also it's based. 123D Design is basically Fusion 360, like you know, like starter kit. It's like the it's like baby Fusion 360. It's got like the same core, but um, it's 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 mainly for like single part designs, like one thing. Uh, the reason why I switched to Fusion was because my designs were starting to have way too many like parts, and I needed a way to manage all the parts, all the assets all the layers, all the solids. And so that was just one reason why um, I switched over to to Fusion. I actually put together a Fusion 360 like uh, like sort of introductory uh, tutorial. So check that out if you haven't already. Um, yeah, let me answer some more questions here. Yes, it's live. Should I get a 3D printer? Yeah, if... Uh, you know what? I've been looking at the yes, the Wanho Duplicator i3. This thing is three ninety nine for a, a fairly good three D printer. There's all sorts of uh, reviews out there on the Duplicator i3 for three ninety nine. That thing is, I think, a beast. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Mon Taigo. What's up, buddy? But yeah, don't get the kit. Get the full assembled 3D printer if you want to start printing right away. Yeah, a lot of a lot of good things about the I've been hearing. How do we join shows like Ask an Engineer on Google Plus? We can show off your projects. I would look at the show and tell posting on Google Plus right around the time that it's about to go live, and PT Phil will actually post the link to the Google Hangout. Because uh, we can't send out invites. The, the way it used to work is we used to send out invites, but we sort of capped out on invites because uh, we can't send anymore. We have too many people in the circle. So um, just lurk around in that post, and you will see uh, an update there. It, it's on every Wednesday at 7:30 um, Eastern Time. Yeah, this is a cute build. I agree. Off can monitor bail. Not sure. Any tips on printing cogs and gears? Now I haven't done too much of that myself, um, but I would recommend having a slight offset for your gears. Um, there's a tool that you can search for. It's like I think Gear Generator, and I'm not sure if you've you've heard about it. Let me see. Yeah, gear generator. Is it this one? Yeah, check this out if you haven't already. And it is incredibly uh, easy to use. You just sort of <laughs> you just sort of modify these these parameters and and make yourself uh, a set of gears. Um, but you might need to do a slight offset like for these gears so that they are not grinding on each other. So they're so they have a, t a teeny bit of play. Um, but then again, I don't have much experience printing them, but every time I have something exact fit, it's always like too tight. So you might want to add an offset or, or so. But you can export these gears out as a SVG. Um, where's the export button? Download SVG, there it is. Uh, oops, I'm not sharing my screen. Derp. So yeah, it's gen <laughs> geargenerator.com. Um, and you get a nice sort of simulator of these gears. You can add as many as you want. Uh, where would I add that? Number of teeth, pitch diameter. There's a way to increase the amount of gears. I'm not seeing it though. I think I think I shared this before too on the 3D Hangout. Add, add a new gear, there you go. You can just keep adding more. That might help you out. Um, it's a nice visual way to, to generate gears. And flip. 
Back to this. Oh, there's a spur gear generator in Fusion. That's awesome. Ah, 3D printing shrinkage. Yes, if you're using ABS, you will get some shrinkage. And PLA could be a little bit brittle. So, depends. Yep. Okay. Hope that helps out. And yeah, um, be sure to, if you haven't already, subscribe to the Adafruit YouTube channel. And I'm going to call it quits for now. Is the Lowspot Mini a good printer? Yeah, you know, the Lowspot Mini is a good printer. I, I was lucky enough to test one out. Um, it's a very, it's very sturdy printer, really good quality stuff. A little bit pricey, but um, it's a good printer. Yeah, there's a lot of options out there, so do your research. Check out, uh, yeah, check out Joel, uh, the 3D printing nerd. He's doing tons of great reviews, so be sure to check him out. But I think that's going to be it for, it for for today, and I will continue on the, the Raspberry Pi Girl Zero project next week, because this week I um, had to wrap up this project. But that's this week's project. You'll be able to check out the video and tutorial shortly. Uh, the tor the tutorial's already out, but we'll do the video thing on Thursday. That's it for this one, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you guys coming and hanging out with me on a Sunday. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. And um, remember to keep on making. I'll see you guys later. Um, bye, guys.